Japan. One of the most technologically advanced countries in the world, but it also has this sort of air of myth to it. It's almost a bit of a nebulous, almost sci-fi-like place. But as I'm standing in Chiba, Japan right now at a show called SeaTech 2019, I'm hoping that this becomes part of the yearly rotation of tech shows, because SeaTech 2019 actually gave me a glimpse into some of the nuances about Japanese tech, and I want to share them with you now. This is Pocket Now, and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Let me share with you my experience here at SeaTech 2019 in Japan. Walking the halls and just being around places in Japan shows me that Japanese tech is quirky, it's actually pretty health oriented, and ultimately it all has to be very convenient. By the way, just to let you know, SeaTech is more of a B2B show, which is business to business, so there are far less consumer products at a show like this compared to ones like CES or MWC. It's kind of the culture of Japanese business that each company continuously innovates so that it can solve its own problems, but a show like SeaTech is trying to bridge the gaps between companies so that they can partner up and together they can achieve some of those goals. In a lot of ways, Japanese tech is just quirky. I have another video on Pocket now about robots specifically, but one point I made in it is that Japanese pop culture finds a way to make something so technically deep have an approachable front. In some ways, this is literally putting an anime face on something to make it look cute, even though it's basically a robot. You're basically putting a cute face on a machine, but that makes a lot of sense for a country that has a rising elderly population. So there's tech with a specific use case, but then it's just made easier to navigate and interact with for older generations when you can actually talk to it or react to it in real time. I get it, it's easy to think of Black Mirror in these situations, but tech in Japan is more about easing the mind rather than actually trying to override it. And it's also easy to get too caught up in the cuteness of it all when there are some real applications underneath that surface level. As I mentioned earlier, this is a more B2B show and many vendors here are trying to sell their tech and abilities to other brands who then sell to consumers after that. This is a prime example, a 3D printing company that sold their services to Suntory, which makes the beverages that you see across all of Japan. This right here is a solution for reusing plastic water bottles for a number of different scenarios. Japan is really eco-friendly and if you ever come here, you'll notice that there aren't really any trash cans anywhere in public. That way they can cut down on the potential amount of garbage and messiness on the streets. Because of that, people tend to reuse some of their items, or they just hold on to it until they do find a trash can later, and that just makes everything a lot cleaner. But these are bottle caps that literally repurpose plastic bottles into a number of different things, like a way to hold your eyeglasses, uh, you can make a plastic bottle a piggy bank, and in one case, you can even use it as a holder for your phone so you have a more comfortable viewing angle. Now, these particular bottle caps have this sort of cat look to them, and that's the point. It's supposed to be cute at first to hook you in, but then there are some undeniable use cases underneath. And that all helps with one of the other focuses I saw here at SeaTech, and that's in the realm of health. Japan is a very healthy country, and generally tech here is trying to improve that across the board, make it more accessible and make it more effective. For example, Sony is actually here, and while I would have loved to see some uh, Xperia smartphones or some PlayStation stuff, their booth here is all about the CMOS camera sensor and how it is used to help in surgeries. Now, what I can tell you is that the image quality on that sensor is really good, even if what it is projecting is something I don't really want to see right now. Here's another application of robotics into health, where hydraulic powered legs are strapped on to the legs of those who have trouble walking. This might be a little bit more in line with the kind of tech you expect from Japanese pop culture, but this is a far cry from the humanized mechs and the Gundam, so let's slow that roll. Now here's one that's actually very near and dear to my heart. Japanese Ingenuity is trying to find other ways of helping type 2 diabetics like myself. This is a monitor that allows you to check your blood glucose without actually having to draw blood. And this product is by Kyocera, of all people. This particular sensor tries to look at the blood flow in an artery underneath your thumb. Ultimately, this product, though, is supposed to be more of a lifestyle thing rather than an actual medical device. So even if it's not completely accurate compared to some of the solutions I use now to test my blood, it's still a way to give people a snapshot into their overall health without being too invasive. The presentation isn't about what the tech can actually do, it's about how it affects the person and how it improves that person's life. So that brings me to a final key aspect I notice all across Japan and here at SeaTech as well, and that is that tech is supposed to be convenient. In a fast-paced society like Tokyo, it's important to have things be easy, accessible, and reliable. The metro system in Japan is one example, and the fact that there are convenience stores like 7-Eleven where you can get all of your supplies everywhere just kind of shows that. 
And then of course there are all of the vending machines that you probably have seen on my IG stories. I absolutely adore because you can easily get anything from the vending machine or convenience stores using a Suica card, which is a tap to pay system that is all throughout this country. So you already have a societal level of convenience because everything works and is very reliable and efficient. And then when you add the tech on top of that, it just makes it even more so. Everyday things like bed and bathroom items are prime examples. So here's an example of something incredibly efficient and convenient. It's all coming from a one faucet. There's water and then a mixture. And then a mixture comes out with soap that makes it foam up immediately, all coming out from the same place. <laughs> oh my God, it's like magic. So that way you don't need to have other things to do soap and to rinse off that soap. It all comes from the same place. Efficient, space saving, convenient. That's awesome. Imagine washing dishes with this. <laughs> that was so gorgeous. This is called a Paramount bed and it has a sensor underneath the adjustable mattress that will automatically change the angle of the bed depending on what it perceives your sleep quality is at the moment. If you're in a deep sleep state, it'll move accordingly to facilitate you have even more of it. And you know what, for all of the travelers out there, they're trying to add this technology into lay flat seats like this. Uh, obviously this is for business class and first class flights, but if you wanted to lay back, it would be able to adjust accordingly. So yeah, it's a great way of just adding a little bit of that health conscious data to something that we probably do, or some people at least, do on a regular basis. Oh yeah. And then of course there's the one thing that people tend to talk about the most in Japan and that is the toilets. Uh, Japan has more techie toilets and bidets than anywhere else in the world and honestly it's one of the most convenient ways of doing something you do literally every day. Other countries and societies like back home in the US can't even hold a candle to the level of this tech in the bathroom. I mean just see how much tech was injected into this toilet seat by a company that makes and optimizes those circuits. Obviously this is another B2B example where this particular company is looking to outsource their products to manufacturers of these toilets. But then there's another example where this toilet is getting even more enhanced so there's always more improvements to be made where this toilet actually has a camera underneath the seat so that it can detect the consistency of your stool and then give you medical advice based upon that snapshot of your health. This thoughtfulness was put into other smart appliances that use certain metrics to gauge your health. In reality, in these situations, you're not doing anything different. It's just that the tech is able to provide you more information because it is tracking the right stuff. So for a country that is as technologically developed and has the infrastructure that Japan does, it's probably no surprise that 5G and AI is a big conversation here. And if there's any country that will probably reach that high level of 5G speed first, it's probably gonna be Japan. So of course, a lot of the tech here is trying to tap into what will end up being a reliable and hopefully incredibly speedy form of mobile internet. That's why you see things like robotics in autonomous cars and also data transfer for all of the things that these products might be tracking in order to improve your daily life. And that's what strikes me the most about SeaTech 2019. This is a good snapshot into the kind of tech that's already in everyday life here in places like Tokyo and in Japan, and it's already high tech and convenient. But every year you are seeing how it's being even further improved and becoming even better. And that's how tech should be, hardly ever invasive, but always useful and reliable. Hopefully with SeaTech opening its doors to more people like me and more consumer facing brands like Sony and Microsoft, we'll see more of what Japan has to offer and maybe we'll see it in our own lives abroad as well. In any case, I'm gonna go grab another really quick coffee from the vending machine, but I'm gonna call it on this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little snapshot into this new show that I am going to for the first time here in Japan. And hopefully this is a show that we could all kind of enjoy in the tech community, because I do think that out of Japan, some of the innovation is something we should really be taking paying attention to. But in any case, thank you again. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Drop some likes on this videos and then let me know what you think in the comment sections down below. Have you been to Japan? Let me know what your experience with tech in Japan has been like and hopefully we'll be able to come to shows like this in Japan more often. Don't forget to check out the robotics video that I did on just robots in general here at SeaTech 2019 and then you can look forward to our next video. See you guys in a bit.